Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning. Good morning to you and, and you and you and you. Good morning and welcome to day number two here at Shanghai Disneyland at the Shanghai Disney Resort. But always remember when you enter Disney Park at the start of the day, please walk. There we go. Welcome. As we pass underneath the fake train station and make our way onto Mickey Avenue for day number two of fun at one of the most gorgeous theme parks I've ever visited. And the weather is a little bit better this morning. The sun's trying to peek through. It, the humidity is a little bit higher. And me and Alex are wearing jeans. Jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't jeans. very good. But it has given out rain for later on. So I'm going to make the most of it this morning. Get lots of footage whilst the weather's good. And welcome to the park. For anyone who's not watched day one, then go and check it out. Because there is some things what we did yesterday, what unfortunately I don't think we're going to get to see again today. But look at this, the beautiful Mickey Avenue. There's no Main Street USA here at this park. You've got Mickey Avenue, but to be honest, it's just as good. It's got so much detail. And what I love about this as well, you've got like mini lane and lots of little areas what actually go off this as well, which is great. And it's returning for the second day, the umbrella. Yay! Yeah, good at that. You don't need it yet. Good time. Now we have got two showings of the parade today, one at 12 o'clock and one at 3.30, so hopefully one of those we can get to see today if the weather's fine. And we'll see Rapunzel. Uh, yeah, hopefully we get to see Rapunzel again, because yesterday, whoever Rapunzel was, so to speak, she's real, don't worry, uh, <laughs> recognised who we are. What side so. of the woken up on? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this though, it's absolutely gorgeous, it really is. So hopefully today we're going to get to see a lot more stuff going on outside. Welcome to Shanghai Disney. That castle there, wow, stunning. You get up close to the enchanted storybook castle and really get to see the amount of detail there is on it. It is a stunning building, it really is. I still think it's very European though with the whole sort of architecture of it and just looking at all these details. It's amazing what you can see as you're walking Chip around. Dale. Little characters just all Of course you've got the main doors at the front just there. There's a big stage out the front and inside the castle you've got the Royal Banquet Hall. That's our one in. 50 Bob's Boutique. It's like a crystal art shop around there. And for anyone who did miss yesterday's vlog, the most impressive inside of a castle. Look at that chandelier. And that leads right out to one of the turrets there, the left-hand turret on the castle, I believe that is, from studying the architecture. Thank you. How are you? Fantastic. I'm pretty much having the best day ever. Oh, that's really good. So are we. It's very, very nice here, isn't it? Was it your first time here? We were here yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Do? We did quite a lot, didn't we, yesterday, actually? So yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your favourite? Pirates of the Caribbean, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the pirates. Are they scary like ruffians and thugs? Oh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's good fun, though, it is. Yeah, really good fun. I'm sure they're pretty nice, too. Maybe just like a can one of them likes to play the piano? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is lovely, isn't it? Oh, wow, look at that. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah, the castle's amazing, isn't it? I really wanted to paint something, but then they put this up. I thought it looked really beautiful. Oh, you're in this park, is it really? It's a shame. Not a lot of people. I'm here. So you're here? That's nice. Did you see inside the castle? Yeah, the, the castle is lovely. Yeah, very nice. Right, should we have a photo? Photo. Love the exterior to Peter Pan. Probably my favourite one, actually. Again, it looks very similar to the exterior of Peter Pan over at Disneyland Paris. This is our first ride of the day. We thought we we're going to have to see Rapunzel, aren't we, on our way down? So happy. Oh, yeah, we're happy that you Oh, we love day. Rapunzel. I love Rapunzel. It wasn't the Rapunzel, though, was it? It wasn't the Rapunzel, but it was a, a very, very damn good <laughs> Rapunzel. Let's go. Very good. Very nice queue line. 
tres. Got your garden wall with all your shrubbery. Oh, that magical Disney twinkles. The question is, how many sorted out the throughput? Peter Pan at the other part is famous for terrible throughput. Two, yes. No one. Thank you. We're about to find out. Oh, it looks like they might seat six people, these ones. Just come off Peter Pan, going for a look in the BR Guest Boutique. This is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, that was really good. Again, definitely the best version of the ride in terms of technology and the layout and length of it was very similar to that of the other Disney parks. Of course, it's Peter Pan, the story of Peter Pan. Uh, amazing, you know, sort of theming throughout. The, the way it's done and when you fly around and you see all the floor. Uh, over London, very well done. It was also a really nice scene towards the end where it was like some doors were open up uh, and you've got Big Ben, so I thought that was quite nice, like a projection, then you go through. Uh, in terms of other things, plenty of animatronics in there. I really liked how Tinkerbell was like in a little box, which was quite magical. Uh, she was sort of fluttering around. I enjoyed that. I'm in love. <laughs> You'd buy some for that woman in your life. I think somehow that would even fit back the bottom of my leg. Alex still needs a woman in his life. And you might have seen throughout the videos, he's had a few along the way, but, yeah. <laughs> he needs that special woman. Unbelievable. He needs his, he needs his Rapunzel. <laughs> oh! Look at this. Oh, they're really nice. I don't need a woman. He's a strong, independent man. I'm a, I'm a partially muscular, <laughs> slightly independent, even though I love my mum. That was lovely, that, wasn't uh, it? Did you yeah. enjoy it? Yeah, it was great. Really, is that probably the best one I've done? Yeah, it is, yeah. I'd say so. Same sort of length, wasn't it? But yeah, not, not, not a massive long, but it's, it's And nice. the throughput has increased. Yeah, even, but even though you still get a 60 minute wait, but then it's better than Walt Disney World where you can wait three hours. Yeah, like at the end of the day, there's now, you, it's gone from Disneyland where it can seat two people, <laughs> over to the other parts where it can seat four, to this one where it can seat six. So there you go, increased the throughput three times over the years. So are, really you, good. are you hungry? What's that? Are you hungry? Go on. Do you fancy some chips? Yeah. Here they are. Chip, 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 chip. There they are, the chips. Be our guest, be our guest. This What's is nice. Service? To the test. Lovely shops there, there, isn't they? Gorgeous. It's nice. So we're just on our way to Winnie the Pooh, and I just thought I'd share this with you guys, especially if you're big fans of the Disney parks. This is really rare to see, a big green open space with picnic benches on. That's really, really interesting. Bear in mind, Disney don't normally like you bringing in your own food, so to speak, and having picnics in the park. I think that's really interesting to see they've got a designated sort of picnic area. How strange is that? The Evergreen Playhouse with the Frozen sing-along celebration. I assume that's very similar to what you get at the other parks. That's a really nice little wagon you got out the front there, though, I like that. Seems a bit quieter so far this morning around Fantasyland. The interesting thing I've noticed now on day two with this park is, unlike the other Disney parks, and I mean every other Disney park uh, that's a Magic Kingdom style anyway, everybody always goes to Fantasyland first and does the attractions. Here, it seems to be quite different, actually. Everyone seems to be 
and going over to Adventure Isle and, and Pirates and doing those. So very, very interesting. And we're going out on Winnie the Pooh. She's just round here. mini area inside Fantasyland because you got the honey spot spin just there which is really strange because it's a teacups ride what's not themed to the Mad Hatter so I quite like that so that's very different I'm loving all the different things we're seeing at these Disney parks it's, it's great especially here at Shanghai and this is the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh which is the dark rides let's go and have a go you can tell it's all so new and so fresh, it's lovely. The toilet, so we've come to see Pooh. Hey, hello, Winnie the Pooh. Hey, say hi to the viewers. Hello. Oh, we're going over here. You're going over there. Hello. Los big Angeles belly, Beach. Big belly. Yeah. <laughs> Duffy said that as well. Duffy said, that to Duffy me. said the same. Oh, we're having a photo. Here we go. Right, look in here. Oh, it's this one. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you what. We're having the right poo experience here, aren't we? All three poo things are on the dark ride, we're on the meet and greet, and now we're on the flat ride. Very stiff, Alex says. Too stiff, I can't handle it. I think I can happily say this on behalf of both me and Alex that Disney is our favourite theme park operator. Is in that, the world, is that yeah, correct? I mean, there's some different companies out there that their own theme parks. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing too much. But Merlin's Magic Recipe is a little bit step too far. <laughs> yeah, a little step in the wrong direction, or should I say, the 132 attractions worldwide direction? 132 or six? I'd take six, six any day. Six. Lego. Can I just point out that this is a really nice design bench? Look at that. And the little spindles on it here as well. I just think that's a really nice bench. Probably my top five theme park benches. What do you think? Number four for me. Number four for you? Yeah, I think it's a, probably in my top three actually, uh, theme park benches. What is your favourite theme park bench? Which area, which park, which country is it in? Comment below your favourite theme park bench. Hashtag bench park worldwide. Bench, 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 bench. So we're in the queue for the newest meet and greet available here at Shanghai Disneyland. This looks fantastic to be honest. I've not seen it before and we've just asked a cast member and it's actually the first day of this meet and greet today. Let's go down the queue line, some nice theming in this one. So it's a star from Pirates of the Caribbean. Ca Captain Crumb. It's me. What are you doing here? This is my meet and greet, what are you on about? So I've queued up 20 minutes to see you. You're just another tourist, aren't you? You're an idiot. Charming. Oh, yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. And then, 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 and
So we've just come off the Roaring Rapids. It is me and Alex's favourite ever rapids. We absolutely love it. If you want to see some on-ride footage, then check out our day one vlog from yesterday. So we're still in an adventure aisle at Camp Discovery. We've not had a look in here yet, and this looks amazing. Basically, you've got Camp Discovery Challenge Trails, which is effectively like a sky rail, high ropes course that runs all the way around this area. I mean, this looks amazing. It's got quite a queue at the moment, but I definitely want to do it today at some point. It was closed in the rain yesterday. But look at this, it even looks like you go inside the mountain there. It looks like a really, really good attraction and first time anything like this has ever been done inside a Disney park. Get some really good views from up there, the park, and also of the rapids itself. Runs all the way around here. I mean, you can't do it. Why? Because we're not camping off. So uh, Look at this though. Great. Theming is amazing. Wow, I think this looks fantastic. I've just realised there's actually a massive footpath that leads all the way around here. Like a walkthrough, and I think we actually go inside the mountain here as well. This is quite cool. It tells me there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't be really interested in doing the high ropes course. But would like to go in the mountain. Here we go, we can go all around here, look. This is amazing, it really is. The scale of this park is so much bigger than I expected. I go as far to say this is the same size as the Magic Kingdom in Florida. And of course, with it being Disney, the thought about throughputs, because we've got three of these next to each other. Wow. Look at that. Oh, some people really wouldn't want to do this. Look at all the theming all here on the steel work. Oh, look at this. This is 100% a must do. So off we go on the high ropes course. Look at this, very complicated system of tracks and it's all been thought about. If someone's stolen in front of you, you can change tracks and oh all sorts. Look at the theming. Off we go. <laughs> How good is this? I've never seen anything like this in a Disney park before. Wait till we get some of the other ones. There's some really good obstacles up there. Wow. Already this has to be one of my favorite Disney attractions. This is brilliant. A little bit of a bouncy bridge. Wow. Very impressive, this is. Oh my gosh. The feeling on this shot is incredible. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> this is stunning. Wow. Look how tall this is. It's a trap. Look at this. This is amazing, isn't it? Let's have a bit of a bounce. It's quite a big cavern down there. Here we are. Hey. This is quite clever. You can either go up the steps, up the uh, little ramp just there, or we can go up the logs. The swinging logs, here we go. Whoa. Oh my God, these swing a lot. 
Wow, look at the views. This is brilliant. How well does this fit into Adventureland? Adventure Isle. It's amazing. I think every version of this area in the world needs one of these. Hey, theme park worldwide on YouTube. Wow. How good is this? Walking over the beams. You all right? Come on, you can do it, it's fine. There we go. Hello. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is so good. One of my favorite ever Disney attractions. I think Walt would be really pleased with this. Look at it, gorgeous. Right, what we got next? Whee. Another, oh, this is quite high, this one. Look at that view, wow. Ready for a swing? I'm not that mean. So as you saw there from the footage around Camp Discovery, that has got to be one of my favourite ever Disney attractions, if not one of my favourite ever attractions at a park. I really enjoy something a little bit different. And yes, that was like going just around a normal high ropes course, but it had all that theming, all the waterfalls and everything else along with it. And to be honest, some of the highest points I've ever had on a high ropes course, because you look at some of the rock work, hashtag rock work, uh, that was all down the side. It was brilliant, some really big steep drops on that. And it was great. I mean, we only did half of it because basically you get to choose. You can either go left or right. If you go left, it looks like you go more into the mountain. But if you go right, some of the obstacles look a bit more difficult. Uh, so we did go right on that one. And if we do get a chance later on, we will go around again and try the left-hand side. But we're going to prioritise doing some of the other things. And then what we haven't done, including some of the things that we have already done, but what we love, like Pirates, Battle for the Sunken Treasure, a lot of people forget that like this channel is not called Roller Coaster Worldwide, it's called Theme Park Worldwide. We we don't just go on roller coasters, do we? we don't just commit to those. There's so many other things it's that all about park. the experience for us, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. This place is incredible. I yeah, so it. did you enjoy Camp Discovery? Yeah, oh, oh beautiful. The the waterfalls and everything. Oh, incredible. I'd love to do that sort of like the Nile River or something like Imagine that. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? But I think every version of Adventureland needs one of those. That was stunning. And it kind of fits with the whole vision of adventure. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Fantastic attraction. Really well themed and beautiful. We're going to Shipwreck Shore. Now, we did do the other walkthrough inside this area yesterday. We thought we'd come and have a look around this one. Oh, this is very nice around here. Now, rumour says, if you drink from the Fountain of View, you'll live forever. Anyone might find out. <coughs> no, definitely not. Nice. Chocolate family in Thorntons, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> oh we've got misters built into the rocks down there, that's quite nice. 
So many lovely areas inside this park. You can really tell it's Disney's newest property. You really can. Got a GoPro rival. What's that? Got a GoPro rival there. Hey, now we have Chesty. Well, it's actually quite a big area down here. On Vimeo, because that's all we can get here. This is cool. Slide, Craig. Canoes is something we haven't done, but we plan to do that a little bit later on. So stay tuned for that one. Hello. All the children have to wear a life vest on that one. Make sure you got your life vest on when you go on shore. Lovely. Hello. <laughs> Lee Wood. <laughs> oh, come on, let that. Do a bit of a squirt here. <laughs> Start battle galleons, Meanie Bay. Wow. And of course, the good thing is about Disney, when they build something, they build it properly. All this will last for years, and it's all proper stones, and... Really just nice quality stuff. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Oh my god, Alex is absolutely dripping wet through. He's been here fighting against these kids for the past sort of 10 minutes. <laughs> really nice interactive walk through this, look at it. And I'm so happy we're getting to see this park in the sunshine today, even though I'm absolutely roasting in my jeans. Say, so give him a good squirt. Wow, look at this. It's amazing. So we had another ride on Pirates of the Caribbean, absolutely awesome dark ride. We love it and I share my full review from that experience, including on ride footage in day one's video from yesterday. Welcome to the Just In Time Janitorial. We'll clean your clock for you. There we go, so if your clock needs a good clean, then bring it here to Shanghai Disneyland. On Mickey Avenue. On Mickey Avenue. You'll get your clock clean. Look at this. Tom's first all that is, isn't that wrong? Get your clock clean. Clock that, clean. That's a clean clock. Thank you. Very clean clock. There we go. Have you got a clean clock, Sean? I have indeed. Look at that for a view of the castle. Wow, it is amazing. And it's time for the parade, which I know absolutely nothing about, I'll be honest. It's very we've seen rare. One float, haven't we? Yeah, we've seen the one float yesterday. On day one vlog. Because um, obviously it was rainy, we got the rainy version. Well, this is the uh, Mickey's Storybook, Storybook Express. Express. Yeah. So here we go, I'll show you some highlights of the parade. Let's go. This is it, I'm afraid. Yeah, Mickey Avenue, everybody. And it's Pepsi, not Coke. What? We're going to clean your clock. Clean all your clocks. That's just clockwork.
Worldwide. My takeover. Yes. Where do we even start with Mickey's Storybook Express? How the hell have I never even you know, heard of that parade before? I didn't even know what the parade was like here at Shanghai Disneyland. And to be honest, a lot of the forums and stuff I'm on, it seems to be all people tend to talk about is the castle and pirates and Tron. Whereas that was absolutely amazing. Whee! Hello! Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. If you can get on, get a VPN, sort you out. Um, so yeah, that was that was brilliant, that was. Absolutely awesome. I mean, that Mulan flow, oh my god, it's gotta be probably the best flow I've ever seen. A because it's got fire on it, B because I love all this oriental stuff. I mean it's brilliant and I'm a very and cultural see, the person. Songs, the songs, beautiful. Uh, songs are amazing, the soundtrack was amazing. Uh, each flow again had its own individual soundtrack. And I just thought that was stunning. I mean, wow, the frozen float there was really good with the big monster at the back as well. I thought that was brilliant. Uh, what else do we have in there? Lotso, he was in there, Lotso on the Toy Story. Uh, we really enjoyed that. I've not seen a big Lotso before like that in the parade. Oh, wow, so many highlights from that. And, <laughs> and uh, wow, brilliant. Yeah, Mickey and Minnie at the start of that as well. And what we really liked, the opening shot with that, was like a bit like a show, wasn't it? How they were all in the line. And, yeah, and, and very they nice. managed to capture it on camera, but uh, they had like the family of the day, so to speak, in a Chevrolet, a very nicely decorated Chevrolet. Yeah, you saw that right at the start of the clip before the parade. So. Um, who who were leading the parade almost, who were kind of like the opening, the pre-show. And just the little things like that that you think about are incredible. That was stunning. I mean, now I've seen that, I can safely say that this place has got some of the best Disney theme park content I've ever seen. I think Alex would agree. You know, it's, it get yourself out here. All these parks are brilliant. No matter what Disney park you go to in the world, you're not going to be disappointed, unless it's Hollywood Studios. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. How Is that joking. open? <laughs> Half of it. Quarter. Uh, but yeah, honestly, that was brilliant. Really, really fantastic to see that. And I couldn't believe it. Like the interaction as well between the people on the floats. I also really like on that how low the characters actually were on some of the floats. So you felt really quite connected to them. Uh, like sometimes on Disney floats, they can be that big that the characters are really high up and out of the way. On that, I felt like really close well, to a lot of the, the characters. Ground, yeah, they were, yeah. yeah. Incredible. And that was brilliant. Great Again, 12 out of 10. Me and Alex so far, we're halfway in today and we have seen more amazing stuff than I've ever seen in, in 24 life. years yeah, on this planet. Yeah. I really have. I'm a kid here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm looking after him, don't you worry. Know something that we did in California that we absolutely loved was Explorer Canoes. It was. It was very special on the last day of the Rivers of America. So it's going to be weird to go on the Explorer Canoes, which we're going to do right now in front of us here. Look at this. Um, and see what it's like from a different perspective. I mean, we also saw, was it yesterday? I can't even remember. Uh, we saw Stitch, encount Stitch Encounter. Yes, yesterday. Now, a lot of that, well, all of that was in Chinese. So although the audience found it hilarious and we're in Stitches, me and Sean were just kind in of sat Stitches. There like, oh. Stitch is. <laughs> I, did, I didn't plan it, but I'm going to pretend I did. Um, and plan it, Stitch. No, okay. <laughs> I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. Um, but no, so I'm hoping this one isn't going to be all in Chinese, but if it is, who cares? It's still an amazing attraction. Really. It is, and I kind of like how the things are in their own language. I've always enjoyed that with Paris. I think it sort of adds to the experience in a way for me. And some people might take it away from it, but for me, I think it really adds to it, seeing the cultural side to it all. If you feel like when you leave wow. a Disney park, you miss it and want to go back, Everybody gets that feeling. There's no place I'd rather be. Final stitch joke, I promise. That was the final oh, one. Oh dear, dear, dear. On that note, let's go and have a little look. Aloha. Four, get in. Aloha. Let's go canoes. Love a good canoe, don't we, on theme park worldwide? 40 minute wait. <laughs> We had a really nice relaxing ride there on the canoes. I mean, it's great exploring around this whole themed area. I mean, it's gorgeous. Treasure Cove and Adventure Isle, two amazing areas in this park. Every area is amazing in this park, but these two are definitely the ones for me, my favourite. And now we're going to continue by having a little look in another restaurant now. Try to be showing you a few of the restaurants on this trip, as much as I can do. Barbosa's Bounty. Let's have a look in here. 
One thing I've noticed about all these Asia parks so far is the restaurants are amazing the themes. I mean, they are at all the Disney's, but you wouldn't get stuff like that over at some of the others. Look at that. Gorgeous. Very clever design in here. You pay just here, and then all the seating is located just behind. That's quite nice. All cast members out the front with the menu. Get a steak in it. So much food. Me and Alex have not struggled for food at all. There's so much we'll eat burgers, steak, fish and chips, chicken nuggets. There's a lot of what we actually eat out here. A little bit more about the Explorers Canoes then. Um, so that was a lot more relaxing, around 13 minutes long. There will be a full POV of that on the channel very soon as well, check that out. Uh, but yeah, it was very relaxing compared to the version in California. You can tell with that, it would be even better when the trees have grown a bit more. I've said that a lot about this park. I love it even more when the landscaping's grown a little bit. Uh, bear in mind, it's still just under a year old. It'll be the first anniversary uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, really enjoyable ride. Very relaxing. You don't have to canoe all the way if you don't want to. You don't have to sort of pedal along. But yeah, very, very good. Really enjoyed that. All these details, look at it. Me and Alex are really having the time of our life out here, we really are. It's just amazing, it really is. Let's have a little look in the seating area. Oh, wow. So it's all themed to like different buildings. This theming just gets better. And this is actually the restaurant, what you see from on Pirates of the Caribbean. The ride track is just down there. Quite interesting, because of the other parks, what I've got this interaction between the two, the ride and the restaurant. They're all table service. With this one, it's actually a, just a normal sort of takeout restaurant. Most advanced ride in the world that at the moment. I love it. Welcome to Alfetro Fandango. The Fandango Theatre. The venues here are absolutely lovely. Look at this. We're going to go and watch a pirate stunt show. This looks really, really cool. I was a wrestling fan, the name Fandango means a lot to me. <laughs> you like your wrestling. All fans in the queue here as well. Plenty of fans. Look at the classic Disney false perspective just up there on the hillside. That's obviously the roof of the theatre, and look at that, the little buildings on the side. Really, really well done. Wow, look at this. If Shanghai Disneyland can get any better, look at this room. <laughs> Can't believe it. This place just keeps wowing me, it really does. It's details that I like in a park. As I always say, random bits of stuff. And if you watch my Planet Coaster series, you'll see that's what it's all about, layers, and putting little things in what mean nothing at all. Like things in here, a lot of this means nothing, but it is there just because it looks nice. Like that, what's the point in it? But it's there to add the experience that it looks nice. Tell you what though, those Disney Imagineers, they could have put the pictures up straight, couldn't they, when they did it, look. Bit wonky that. Should have got the spirit level out. <laughs> I joke, of course. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Quite an interesting 
idea to have a pre-show like that in a venue. I quite like it though, it's a little bit different. It saves just waiting there for, well, just to go into the actual venue itself. And here we go, everybody just started running. <laughs> here we are, this, wow, oh my god. Look at this. So down the middle somewhere, I think. Just watched Eye of the Storm, Captain Jack, Stunt Spectacular, and wow, that was absolutely awesome. Me and Alex have really seen some of the best stage shows in the world on this trip. Definitely the best stage shows I've ever seen. They've been fantastic. Now that stunt show was amazing. We had some of the usual stuff in there, some ropes, zooming across, and all that kind of stuff. But then we had an amazing scene where the whole room filled up with smoke. Uh, the curtain lifted. I may have you noticed in the video, but since the start, all the theatre changed and it all looked smashed up. And wow, that was really well done. And the best thing in there, there was like a wind machine in the stage and it blew two of the pirates up and they were like going up and down and blowing up and down. Like it looked absolutely amazing. I mean, they weren't on some sort of safety net or anything like that. It was literally, they were on this massive, probably about 30 foot up in the air, spinning round, doing somersaults and all sorts on this air. It was amazing. It was a bit like one of them sort of skydive simulator things without the walls all the way around the side. It was really, really clever and amazing. Really, really well done. 10 out of 10. Oh my God. It was meant to want that. It was crazy, wasn't it? Absolutely crazy. That wind machine. <laughs> Where do you even start with it? It is crazy, isn't it? This area, blown away. Yeah, and then we've just come out of that show. No, no point. Blown away. We've got this over here as well. Yeah, definitely one of the best. Some usual stunts in there, but overall one of the best sets I've ever seen. Uh, all the set design was brilliant. A big screen at the back. 
and then all that broken brickwork up on the back wall. Uh, really, really good. About a 20 minute show in there, plus 10 minutes we had in the pre show. So, yeah, really, really good. Fantastic show. Like I say, some of the best shows in the world we've seen, haven't we, this trip? So far from home. I know. I'm not going to see the shows the same again at the other Disney parks. These really are. We're not exaggerating. Creme de la creme. the money to come here. I genuinely mean that these are phenomenal. This has been worth every single penny this trip. More. Double. And more. Wow. I'm even struggling to review things this trip because I'm just that blown away. When I'm filming things, I'm just mesmerized, but I'm there and my jaw's just like. <laughs> Crazy. Amazing part. Wow. I've got one thing to say about that sign, and that's Tomb Blaster at Chessington. Any rugs, anyone? If you don't know what I'm on about, check out our most recent vlog from Chessington World of Adventures. Rugs. We found another little area here in Treasure Cove. Look at this. The buildings are amazing. It's kind of a bit like Diagon Alley down here. Three rugs, three rugs, More rugs. <laughs> and I can reassure you, it just like the stagger. Okay. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Persian rugs, Persian rugs. The detail. Now Disney is famous for its detail. I know I keep saying it, but I've never seen so much detail. <laughs> it's amazing down here. Happy place, welcome. Oh, we've got all the castles. Look. Oh, here we go. Disneyland, Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris. Wow. Magic Kingdom. Disneyland. Oh, very nice. Oh, very interesting. Very nice for celebration. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well worth coming in. Literally, we've waited five minutes to get to this point. What's this? Another five minutes? Tops. 10 minute wait for Mickey. The velvet door. Beautiful. No talking, Mickey here. Mickey! Hello! How great to see you. I like your outfit. Your outfit looks very, very good. First anniversary. Much love. Yeah. Hello, Mickey. High five. Thank you. There we very go. Good. We have a oh, we photo time. <laughs> I mean, Mickey was nice in there. I loved all the different castles, what they had on the wall inside. Let's have a little look inside the Marvel Universe. Quite a big uh, venue, actually, this. Did you enjoy meeting Mickey? I did, yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, 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 I'm past you, Mickey, now. For any big fans of Marvel that really enjoy stuff like this, obviously the whole Spider-Man. What about you though? Is it not weird knowing that we've been to Walt Disney World as many times as we have? Seeing Spider-Man in Disney Park is still a weird thing. It is very strange, isn't it? Obviously with them not allowed to have it at Walt Disney World due to a licensing agreement. Back in the day when Islands of Adventure opened. Spider-Man being great, Iron Man. The new Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, this afternoon. Don't say that on this channel. Sorry, <laughs> Hollywood Tower Hotel. Tree. I've, I've got a thing going on with Disney at the moment. Why the hell have they ripped down the Tower of Terror? I'm not very really pleased. I like it. I like it a lot. What? I like the look of it. Looks good. Cool in here if you're into all this kind of stuff. For me, this does nothing for me, but I like to come and show you guys just so you can get an idea of what there is to see. So yeah, quite a few.
few meet and greets and Marvel things to see. I want to meet Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I want to meet Spider-Man. Alan's cute. And we can meet Groot in 10 minutes. I think that'd be worth doing. A very new character to the Marvel universe. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Good to meet Groot. Learn how to draw him. It's an art academy. Oh, that's quite cool. cool. There you go. Marvel Universe. Spider-Man! There he is. How are you? Great. There you are. Looking good. Good to see you. Pose? Pose? Oh, yeah. Can we see you? Get low. Get in the mouth. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you get a hug. He's a kind spy man. Oh, I'll have a fist bump as well. Yeah. Thanks, Spidey. See you later, mate. Good English. Good English by Spider Man, man. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Every time I walk up towards this castle, I just get blown away by it. It's absolutely huge and it's stunning, the detail on it. I was so unsure on this castle. I was so unsure on this part, to be honest, when I first sort of saw the plans for it. But now I'm here, I'm absolutely loving it. And we're coming to towards the end of day number two here. And wow, it's been an incredible two days seeing this Disney Resort, it really has. A little bit of about the technology. So last night, if you did watch our vlog from part one of our day here, you'll see that we watched Ignite the Dream. Now these two turrets here, very clever. This one here, and one in the same place on the other side, actually hold a lot of the tech for the show. Uh, inside here, you've got like a big sort of truss what lifts up uh, out the top of the turret. And it's got speakers and lights on there. It's very clever how they built these, so in the daytime, it didn't spoil the view having a massive lighting tower there. So advanced, and, this, it? and you know, we've knocked Marvel and Star Wars about a lot of things and throws it, but Disney now, I've got to be honest and say, controversial calling me that if you want, if you wish, but the princesses are great for everyone. Even I love princesses, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue. Oh, we know he does, yeah. Oh, I do. But there is now with Marvel, with Star Wars, Indiana Jones, um, all the throws, all the acquisitions, well, acquisitions, creations. There is something for everyone. There is. It's definitely not are. for just girls or just kids anymore. Well, this was a lot of a stereotype back in the early 90s. There was a lot of talk of when is it going to be something that young boys and teenage boys would love and experience. Yeah. And Aladdin came along from that. It was nice. But since then, it's really grown and grown and grown. Now Marvel. So I'm not saying any 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 particular person falls into any particular category. I don't say that, and neither do you. I know you don't, Sean. But there is something for everyone. Disney offers the full package, and that is the start of the future. Inspirational words there from the milkman. All I'm going to say is, what a magnificent building. Really, really nice.
the interior queue line for the castle walkthrough. Advertised a 40 minute wait. That looks like the entrance just there. Wow, this is amazing in here. Look at the roof. Shame about the cattle pen queue line. But the roof more than makes up for it. Look at the detail. More chandeliers, flickering lights. All the paintings in the ceiling, very, very nice. I think it's going to look lovely in here. Wow, look at this. I mean, this is incredible, isn't it? <laughs> the fact there's so much inside of this castle, it really is the ultimate Disney castle, and by a long way as well. I mean, you look at this compared to the Magic Kingdom, especially where there is nothing at all really inside. It's crazy. Anna and Elsa in her life, frozen. That's a little look down there to the center of the castle. Wow. chandelier as well through the stained glass window. Wow. This is where we're going to, we don't know. I don't know, okay. I'm assuming just a little walk through around this bit. God, it's crazy. Hello 哇哦你是不是有什么麻雀呢 Basically, it's like lots of little shows all combined into one walk through attraction. So nice. So well done as well with the theming and the screens. A bit like pirates in a way. They've got the layers done really well. Wow. There's so much inside this castle. <笑>你要有毒吗 
你也可以帮忙哦。右手指一个小动物，小动物们。Oh wow! So we've just done the castle walkthrough. That was absolutely gorgeous, and the fact there's so much inside that storybook castle, it's amazing. The fact you walk up them steps, go through all the different scenes. I think Alex described it really well, saying it was very dungeon-esque and Shrek's Adventure, that kind of style. Instead of having an actor in each scene, it was like a screen and lots of stuff going on in terms of visuals and audio uh, projections in there. It was really, really lovely. So we're just on the footpath now between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland and after a bit of research we found out that this area is what is going to be Toy Story Land and that is actually the start of the construction of RC Racer. I mean yeah, I mean when you look at these toilets here you can kind of tell this is going to be Toy well, Story Army and you've got the little, uh, Army little stars. It's amazing isn't it what Disney do and I've already told this story back in Hong Kong, but I'll tell it again for anybody who didn't see that vlog. When Disneyland Paris uh, built Ratatouille, and that, well, Toy Story Land, we obviously knew Ratatouille was coming because they did all the Parisian street first. This is kind of what they've done here, and this was announced from looking uh, before the park actually opened. They said, right, we've already got an expansion planned, which is Toy Story. Obviously, they have got a Toy Story hotel here as well. Uh, which we will be doing a video on both the hotels here at Shanghai Disney Resort. Uh, but yeah, there you go, you can tell this is where it's going to lead exactly into this brand new area. And this fence, very, very temporary here for Disney as well with the lights on. But yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? How they're already thinking about the expansion. And to be honest, it, the, the right, I mean, they knew it was going to be very, very popular. And yeah, that's actually RC Racer. I mean, looking at the support structure now, you can actually tell that will be like your half pipe Intamin style coaster. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to seeing that, and obviously that will be opening in 2018. So I'm sure we won't be back for a good few years, but uh, next time we do come back, that will be open, and so we'll uh, much more here at Shanghai Disney. Fascinating though, that. Really, uh, really interesting how they do all the infrastructure first. And there you go, a little construction update on that one. Tomorrowland it is absolutely awesome. Again, check out our day one vlog where we go and see Stitch, we ride on Buzz, and of course take a ride on Tron as well. What a gorgeous area. I'm gonna give you a bit of a different perspective on Tron though. Look at this. saw them from the footage a fantastic ride Tron light cycle power run it really is a stunning attraction and especially at night it really is one to do in the dark even though you've only got that little section there that's outside it is stunning with all the lights and got a bit of a party going on down there they have a dance on every 20 minutes that's very similar to what you get over in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom where they have a bit of a bit of a party going on a bit of a rave 
This park is crazy, it's coming towards the end of our second day here and our final day here at Shanghai Disney Resort. It is crazy to think that this place is so new and everything's so different, but it's got its own special magic and it's got that classic Disney magic as well, it really has. It's a gorgeous park at night and we've just managed to squeeze everything into two days. Personally, uh, my only regret we've had so far with this trip is I do think we should have had three days at this park. I don't know about Alex, but I, I, I do feel like we should have had another yeah, day. Three days will just give us time to actually appreciate things a little bit more. And to be honest, we've come at a good time of year. If you come in the height of summer, you might not be able to do it in three days even. It depends because it is such a big theme park. It is a massive park and so much to do, and especially stage shows. You don't want to miss the stage shows. Um, so yeah, definitely I would recommend three days. I do think we both underestimated the scale and sheer awesomeness of this park so and we've still got one more attraction to go and do which is the seven dwarfs mine train this ride has had a lot of downtime much like it gets over the magic kingdom at walt disney world uh, the past two days had a lot of downtime it's been down most of today uh, but we're going to go and head over there now and give that a go yeah, yeah, the well, version of uh, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I do like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. It's a little bit short, but I do really like the indoor section. I think the animatronics in there are really cool. They like the projection animatronics, and they work really, really well, especially on the Seven Dwarfs. So we'll head over there and uh, give that a go. Less than an hour to go until the park closes. Uh, but there is a little area outside uh, which looks absolutely fantastic. So we're going to go and check that out. It's basically their version of Disney Springs, uh, and it looks really, really nice. Downtown Disney-style area. With little shops, restaurants, there's a Lion King stage show there. It looks really, really good. Don't really know loads about it. Uh, we did see it a little bit earlier on, uh, but it does look very, very nice. So I can't wait to have a look around there. Will the Disney Lego store, lots of other shops in there as well. So we're going there. Uh, have a little look at that. It's but uh, the scale of this place after one year, though, it, isn't it? It is, it's amazing. The expansion is imminent, as we can see just over here. So we'll. Uh, illuminated. Yeah, it, it is gorgeous, isn't it? Right, so have been around here at night, around this section. Amazing. Awesome. This looks really, really nice. All the lighting and very, very similar to that other one at Magic Kingdom. Into the mine. Welcome to the Old Mill Mine Tours. Welcome to the Old Mill Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Row one, row one. I can't believe it. So excited. <laughs> really nice trains on this. And if you didn't realise, this ride system is very clever. They actually rock side to side, which adds a really nice sensation while you're on board. Even better in night, this one as well. If you are going to queue up, make sure you ride it in the dark. Let's go. <laughs> Castle, and there were some fantastic views of the castle on the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I mean, that was pretty much identical to that other version of the Magic Kingdom in Florida, as expected. My one bug with that ride is it's a little bit too short. I really like the first drop when you come out the station, then you get around to the left, uh, a few little turns and things, and then of course you got that lift hill uh, inside the dark ride section, which has got all the animatronics in there. And like I say, the animatronics are very clever. They use the same style as what's on the new Frozen ride at Epcot at Walt Disney World in Florida, uh, where they sort of project in, which is very, very clever. I do really like that style. I do prefer, I would say, the normal style of animatronic, especially after seeing the likes of pirates and things here. Uh, but yeah, really, really nice ride as expected. And the rain is just starting to come down a little bit, not too much, but I'm really pleased that I managed to get some shots today at the park without it absolutely chucking it down. I mean, good. Whose mine train was it? My mine train. Really? 
Yeah. Okay. Darren Brown. <laughs> he wishes. Oh, here we go. It's going to have a look at Treasure Cove and Adventure Isle in the dark as well. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous, this park, isn't it? And I just can't believe where it is, to be honest. And we've, uh, we've seen it it's after yeah. watching this park being built. What I was thinking about whilst uh, you having a look at Tron and, and, and riding Tron and everything, I was thinking, we've seen it, we've heard it, we've smelt it, We've tasted it, we got burnt from it. And we bought the t-shirt. And we bought the t-shirt. <laughs> exactly. Spot on, sir. Very there good. You go. And that means the next Disney park we step in after today will be Alas. Disney Park. Well, last goodbye, Disney Park. It's, it's, it's crazy. It will be Park, well, Magic Kingdom style park number six, it will be for us. And it will be our 11th Disney park out of 12. So obviously, we will be going into Tokyo Disney Sea, which a lot of people have said, Sean, you've saved the best till last. So we'll soon find out with that one. But of course, it is our favourite ride here. I think that's a mutual agreement, isn't it, really? We're going to go and have one last ride on Pirates of the Caribbean, which is absolutely stunning. It really is. And there will be a full, complete experience video on the channel because uh, me and Alex did manage to get a boat to ourselves on the front row and I recorded an amazing POV that I will be sharing very soon here on the channel once all the vlogs are up from this very trip rare to get I'll, I'll put that on yeah so we're gonna go and have one last ride we're not really bothered what the queue is we're gonna go and do it uh, if we miss ignite the dream then we miss ignite the dream with this one uh, but hopefully we you never know we might be able to get both I mean I think it says so let's say 15 minutes we've got half hour till the show so 10 minutes oh there we go we might be okay Here's Disney Park number five. Here we go, Pirates of the Caribbean battle for the sunken treasure. Not even 10 minutes, the best ride at the moment in the world has currently got a walk on queue because everyone's waiting for the fireworks. Wow. Walk on. amazing ride and there's only a few rides that have made me feel like that and I've always remember rides as a kid making me give this sort of funny feeling and obviously Indiana Jones September 2015 when I was there with Chris, John and Lee on the, one of the best trips I've ever done and when we was there I had that feeling with Indiana Jones I had the feeling with Mystic Manor and then with this it takes that feeling to a whole new level. But I do feel like I can talk about that ride a lot more and review it. And I am going to in just a few moments time. However, first, we are just a few minutes away from Ignite the Dream over on the Enchanted Storybook Castle. So we, I'm gonna show you a few more clips of that in action, along with a few clips of this area in the dark. And then I'll sum it up a little bit more at the end. I think that's the best thing to do. We'll uh, go to Mickey Avenue after and we'll sum it up just there, but wow, really breathtaking.
what a beautiful nighttime show Ignite the Dream really is on my favorite castle ever at a Disney park. Out of the five Magic Kingdom style parks that I've done, this has definitely been the best. I mean, this park is stunning. I absolutely love the heritage of Disneyland in California. It is brilliant. However, the, on this occasion, the future of Disney and how the company's moved on really shows at this park. And that for me does outshine Disneyland in California. I love the heritage there. I love the Matterhorn, I love the monorail. I love going on the original versions of attractions. And that is absolutely fantastic and it's a very special park. But this is Disney moving forward. This is the future. And it's got its own identity and that's why I've fallen in love with it. Uh, I didn't think I would even class this in my top three Disney parks, never mind be there at number one. But just walking around this feels so special and there's a number of attractions here that are, are really top class and just the feel of the themed areas, the details and this vlog does not show even a patch on what this park really is. Watching it on video doesn't because I've watched other people's vlogs, I've watched walkthroughs, I've watched POVs, I've watched all sorts. And I still thought, Shanghai Disney just doesn't look like it's gonna be for me. Uh, I thought it doesn't have a Main Street USA. I mean, that's my favorite area along with Frontierland. It doesn't have either of those, no Space Mountain, no, it's a small world. And it's just so strange that I'm standing here right now. This is the biggest surprise I've had in the whole of my sort of theme park experience, standing here in Shanghai outside the Enchanted Storybook Castle. It is gorgeous. And of course, the main thing, the main highlight from this park over in uh, Treasure Cove, it is of course Pirates of the Caribbean. A fantastic, immersive, words can't describe experience. And I struggled to talk about it quite a bit. However, now I've got a few minutes to sort of talk about it as an experience and why I really enjoyed it. So in terms of the exterior of the ride, the first thing to notice is you don't actually realize that you're in a massive warehouse with the queue line itself. Uh, it's lots of different buildings with lots of details. There's like weapons on the side, lots of little sort of areas to look around, which is really nice. As you step inside the actual building itself, uh, you then got little scenes at either side, which are beautifully lit, which are really nice. Then we talk about the ride system, which is incredible. We then worked out it was a track system under the water, allowing the boat to spin round. How amazing, how advanced is that? And I go as far to say at the moment that is the most advanced ride out there on this planet. It really is. Uh, everything in there. I also thought, along with Alex as well, I'm sure he'll agree when we'll, and we'll ask him in a second, but in terms of the screens, we don't like screens on attractions. However, in that, it needed the screens for Disney to accomplish what they wanted to do with that attraction. And that was add a dimension to it, another level, in terms of not just putting the screen there and it just being a screen and that's it. No, you've got the screen, you've then got some theming, you've then got the water, you've then got the special effects, you've then got the soundtrack. It is absolutely stunning, it really is. And what they've done with that uh, is brilliant, it really is. Uh, when you go into that first scene on the ride, uh, of course, you're traveling round and you see what I really like on there. You've got like the famous scene on the right hand side with the, the two pirates that are locked in like a, a cave with all the bars at the side and they're skeletons. The dog is also a skeleton. So it's like this is built, sort of based many years in the future, so to speak, where the pirates from all the other pirates of the Caribbean have sort of died and become skeletons. And I love that. It's got its own story. And then, of course, we progress round to the brilliant animatronics, what you've got there, the brilliant Jack Sparrow that just appears like that. Still don't know how that's done, but it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it really is fantastic uh, what they've done. Uh, going on from that, you've then got the brilliant scene where you're underwater. Now that's gotta be the most impressive scene on the ride. Uh, the ceiling is all blue and wow. I, every time I've gone through that, my mouth that has just been like, hasn't it? It's incredible. Oh, it is amazing. Uh, going on from that, of course, you've got Davy Jones, or as I call it, the big octopus squid thing. Uh, I'm not very good when it comes to carrots and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I loved it. Uh, I really did. Davy Jones, so you, you go into that scene and it's amazing how he's facing the other way around and then he turns around and you've got this beautiful sort of window behind. Again with the screen and then all the theming and the layers in front. Gorgeous, really, really well done. Moving on from that, more screens uh, with theming in front, and then you go into that epic battle scene, which is crazy. The doors open up, the projection map doors, you see the ships all there on the screen, and then you're actually gradually turning round, which gives the sort of feel that you're lifting up 
uh, which is really crazy. Uh, going on from that, you then turn around, face forwards, and then you've got Jack Sparrow up at the top on the ship, Davy Jones on this side, two massive galleons either side, and then the big fight scene takes place, which is stunning. And then again, you've got a screen right at the front, as you saw in the footage, and it just so immersive is having the two ships at either side as actual props, and then the screen at the back. It is so well done, it really is. And then you've got the explosive finale where you, of course you go down backwards into the drop and wow. At the moment, that is my number one ride out there. How long it's gonna stay there, I don't know. Unfortunately, Mystic Manor didn't really stay there for that long. But I'm just now gonna go on to something else. Uh, just before we let Alex speak, I will let you speak a minute, don't worry. Don't, don't take I'm just getting a bit emotional with it. Like, I need to stop sort of comparing these things, especially at Disney parks now. I've seen that much, and I know a lot of people like it when I compare different attractions, but I think it's time, now I've done so many, to just realize that each and every one has got its own identity. I love each and every Disney park out there in the world. And as much as that Pirates of the Caribbean is my favorite ride out there right now, that doesn't mean that everything else I've ever been on, I, you know, I don't think any less of. I enjoy and appreciate everything. I always look at the positives as much as I can do. Uh, if there is any negatives, I will point them out, but I'm very much a positive person. And Theme Park Worldwide is very much a positive channel. I love coming to these parks. I love sharing my experience. And this really has been a very incredible two days as part of this brilliant trip. Uh, so there we go. This park, I can't sum everything up, but brilliant. Some other highlights here, Tron, Buzz Lightyear, Adventure Isle, uh, the whole sort of high ropes thing that we did, Fantasyland uh, is gorgeous, the walkthroughs in the castle, so much I can't even sum it all up. The parade, I'm not even going to begin to sum everything up, but wow, incredible. And if you have got any questions you want to ask, I will do a Q&A about it or when I do get back to the UK, so you can, so I've had a bit more time to think about it and let it settle in, and then you guys can ask me any questions there about individual rides and attractions, because we have been on everything, we've seen it all. Um, so feel free to, to do that and I will make sure I post a video about that and on our social media when I do get back. So there we go, it has been stunning, it really has. Anyway, let's move over to Mr. Crumb, the milkman himself. <laughs> it was good. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I can't top what you just said, but I can elaborate on what I was saying earlier when I mentioned about how sad I was feeling. That sad feeling is a multitude of different sadnesses, but none of them are angry, sad, uh, angry, heartbreak, emotional, physical, mental, verbal, anything like that. It's purely because we have to go. Um, oh, God, with a cry. Oh, man, I don't do emotional speeches. And don't put any music over this when you're editing, please. Uh, the music's already on. It is. It's and beautiful. look at that. And, you know, to, to, before this trip, I'd be very judgmental of minor parks, not even going into any detail, just local parks, minor parks, UK parks, compared to the Disney scale. If I was to put a park from right down the bottom, a very low budget park to Shanghai Disney, oh my God, what a journey that is. And I didn't believe in the impossible, in the impossible of making a perfect theme park. <laughs> and it's here. And it's, oh my God, it's real. It's so real. And you know, I came into the theme park community very late, 2010 to be precise, when I rode my very first thrill roller coaster. And to be here now, seven years later, standing in quite possibly the most amazing thing I've seen in 20 years of my life. Oh man, <laughs> I just don't know what to We're getting too deep. We've been rambling on for eight minutes and 32 seconds. Let's, let's go and, let's That's go and it. That is shop. the end of the vlog. Shop. But that isn't the end of the trip, of course. We've got so much more to come. Uh, they really is. So make sure you check out our other videos here on Theme Park Worldwide. If you don't like emotional stuff, we're very sorry about the past eight minutes there, but it's this means so much to us. Yeah. This really does mean so much to both of us, and the fact we've done it, and the next season resort we go to, that will be it. That will be number six, and it will be the end. I'm going to shut up. He's gonna definitely going to shut up. And here from the Shanghai Disney Resort, a very emotional evening for us. That means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Shanghai Disneyland is now closing for the day. We hope that you enjoyed your visit with us and that you will come back again very soon. For your shopping enjoyment, Mickey Avenue will remain open for an additional hour. Thank you, and please enjoy your evening.